Okay, well, we're uh, one lecture away from the, the uh, next exam, which will be the second exam for the class. And today what we'll do is finish up the, uh, effectively finish up chapter 12. In addition to the material in the notes and the book, we're gonna ha we had a little bit of extra material that I handed out in the notes about surface modified, polymer modified electrodes. So we'll finish that up today. And then I think what we'll do is uh, go over the homework that we've had outstanding and uh, we'll do any, uh, clear up any of the problems you had in the homework hopefully. And then if we have some time left, we'll start on chapter uh, eight, which is the, um, I think it's chapter eight, yeah, which is the hydrodynamic voltammetry section. And then we'll talk about our um, paper, again, if we have any more time. So let's finish up uh, chapter 12. And if you remember last time, we were talking about modification of electrodes. And we were mentioning different ways to uh, modify electrodes. One of the ways was to uh, simply attach using covalent methods of bonding to attach some sort of functional group on the surface. And the idea was if you have a metal surface or a carbon surface, you can take advantage of the fact that even on metal surfaces, you often have a metal oxide that can be uh, undergo a chemical reaction, a covalent bond to some other uh, molecule or ion. That surface then becomes modified with what you've attached. And that attached functional group can then be further modified if desired. So you can think of building your surface out from there. And we talked about metal oxide surfaces. What's really a, a rich chemistry though has been carbon electrodes. And in many cases, the oxides of carbon can be functionalized in a very similar manner to the uh, normal solution phase organic chemistry. I'm gonna talk about a couple different ones. Last time we talked, as we were finishing, we were talking about using this, uh, what they call DCC, as carbodiamide type chemistry. And that's a very useful method. But in fact, it turns out there's another method that's been just been developed a, a few years ago by a French electrochemistry group led by uh, Saviant, who's a very famous electrochemist. And he suggested the following method. He says if you take a glassy carbon electrode, and it probably would work for almost any carbon, but he used a glassy carbon electrode, and he had used a material, oops, not two, just one, not three, two. It's a salt. It's a diazonium salt is what it is. And he started out with a, the nitro group, the nitrophenyl diazonium. And what happens is this diazonium functionality absorbs onto the carbon surface. And then once you reduce that diazonium uh, functionality, then a reaction occurs in which the nitrogen carbon bond here cleaves <laughs> That leaves as the phenyl, nitrophenyl group has now a radical uh, at that point, which then, because it's in close proximity of the carbon, efficiently couples to the electrode surface. So upon reduction, you get a coupling like so. And then you uh, produce a, a nitrogen gas as, a, as another byproduct. So this nitro group is available for other things and what, for example, what you can do is you can reduce this in an aqueous solution and acetate buffer to form officially, uh, efficiently uh, an amine group. So you can add on a group like this which now is available for this biotinavidin coupling. There's lots of biochemical processes that can take advantage of free amines to do linking and, and so on. So that's a very useful group. But it turns out that almost any diazonium salt uh, that's got this phenyl ring, that it, so anything else that's attached, so it could be nitro groups, it could be a alkyl groups, could be anything else attached on the para position can be efficiently coupled to the surface in, in this particular process. So this is a very useful method that Saviant and coworkers have developed. And the, and the uh, reference is in your notes, so I'll just just make a note of Saviant that it's in 90, 1992 as the first development. 
The other thing that you can do is, uh, there's been some work with what they call direct amine attachment, where you take a carbon electrode and uh, an amine such as this, um, and you can reduce that, or oxidize it, I should say, and what you get then is an attachment like so. And you lose a, a proton in the, in the meantime. And that's been useful too. So you can use actually uh, amines that have alpha omega type attachments. So you have a, uh, an amine attached on one end and then a free amine at the other end. Or you can have an amine on one side and some other functional group on the other side. This type of work has been uh, pub, uh, first developed by Mark Porter's group. Can't write today. And then that was, um, there's a reference. The two authors are Dean Heimer, Dean Hammer, I guess, and Porter in Langmuir, uh, 1994, volume 10, 1306. And that's a initial description. They've got some subsequent papers that also are useful. Now what are you, you going to be doing with these sorts of things? We've already seen where you can use this as a method to attach a catalyst on the surface like enzymes which help to increase the selectivity of a chemical process. But you can also try to do as a, a mediator, as an electron transfer mediator on the surface. In many cases, direct electrode chemistry, electrochemistry is often not very use, is not very possible because the reaction is slow when you try to directly oxidize or reduce something with an electrode. And often you find that a, a solution phase electron transfer is much faster. So for example, you can reduce or oxidize something with an oxidant or reductant uh, much more efficiently than you can by an electrode. And that has to do with a number of chemical properties of the oxidant and reductant and the thing you're trying to ox reduce or oxidize. But so the idea here is that well, let's take a, uh, our solution phase oxidant or reductant and attach it to the electrode. So now we'll have the best of both worlds. We can use our electrode for the reaction chemistry, but because our oxidant or reductant is attached to the electrode, it doesn't go away, so we don't have to worry about an expensive catalyst, for example, or the presence of the catalyst in the solution, which may involve the, a problem with the workup of our uh, reaction. We do, we do a reaction, we have to get rid of the catalyst later on. So for example, people have tried to use these as electron transfer mediators. One initial attempt was this one, where you attached an orthoquinone using this amide type coupling. Now this orthoquinone, uh, if it was in solution, this, this bit here would be uh, what they call a catechol. <coughs> and it's very easy to oxidize and reduce. And so it's a good choice for doing oxidations and reductions in solution. And the uh, one thing they tried to do it was with a very difficult material to work with called NAD. We've talked about NAD already as, a, uh, as an enzyme, enzymatic substrate. It stands for um, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. Now normally when you try to uh, oxidize NADH to NAD, The reaction does occur, you see a wave for that process, but it's usually quite positive of the formal reduction potential. In other words, the, there is a very large over potential for that reduction. The other thing that happens is that because of the electrochemistry is in the high oxidation potentials, often this NAD in the process of being, NADH in the process of being oxidized also forms other oxidation products which tend to accumulate on the electrode surface. They form pol polymeric type deposits on the electrode surface which tends to passivate the electrode. So within a cycle or two of trying to oxidize the NADH to NAD, the reaction 
basically craps out, you don't get any more current, and you'd have to repolish your electrode and do it again. So for example, if somebody wants to use this as a detector in a liquid chromatography setup, it would be no good because it would only work for a few seconds and then it would completely stop working. So you might want to use this catechol as your mediator for that process. In this case, we see if we attach this catechol to the surface, you see much better electrochemistry, in some cases as much as a volt difference in the, um, in the reduction or the oxidation process. What's happening here is that the catechol is being oxidized at a low potential. As soon as it becomes oxidized, it takes an electron away from the NADH, becomes re-reduced, so it's regenerating itself in that process. So essentially you're, direct, you're doing electron transfer or electron uh, transfer from NADH to the electrode through the intermediate uh, oxidation reduction of our attached species. The problem too with this is that even, even in this case, this doesn't work very well. After a few times it tends to foul, the electrode fouls. And so people have worked with different sort of mediators and different attachment processes, but it turns out that NADH to NAD has always been a really tough uh, problem for people to try to do. So it turns out that solution or surf uh, direct attached mediators often do not work well for that sort of job. Now they do work well for this enzyme attachment we've already talked about, but for this sort of job where you're trying to uh, catalyze a process, the 